Is this the final stage of life? Every once in a while, it's helpful to take a step back from the details and examine the broader view. Now that computer power and artificial intelligence have come together, we may finally be able to overcome some of technology's greatest challenges. Though we may think of ourselves as living in a highly developed society, we're actually very much in the baby stages of technological development. However, according to scientists, humanity is at a turning point in its history, and the direction we take in the coming century will determine the fate of our civilization for future generations. This is the stuff of gods, the ability to willfully create universes and manipulate space and time. Could we ever establish a civilization of Type 7? Why could this possibly be a terrible idea? Come along as we explore why a Type 7 civilization, the ultimate goal of life and everything, will never be found. It all started in the USSR. Nikolai Kardashev, an astronomer, came up with a theoretical framework to assess the level of a civilization. He came to the conclusion that a society's energy requirements grow in direct proportion to its level of technological development. So, to gauge the level of civilization according to energy resources, Kardashev constructed the Kardashev scale. He initially classified them into three distinct stages of growth, but that number was eventually raised to seven. To start, there's type zero. That's us. Humans currently sit at around 0.72. 4.5 billion years have passed and we're still not a type one society. Isn't that a letdown? We're just beginning this incredible journey, so don't worry. A Type 0 civilization encompasses far more than what is visible from your window, but what about what became before, and after that, what will come next? As a proto-human on Earth, you would fall into the lowest category of civilization, which is Type 0.1. Foraging and hunting would need the use of sticks and other primitive implements. In all likelihood, you'd be completely naked. The prospect of proto-lions devouring a large number of your fellow proto-humans is, unfortunately, not very appealing. But in a proto-society, every member would have to battle for the right to mate, the right to defend their hunting grounds, and the right to rise to the position of leader in a power structure based on physical might. Therefore, it could be to your benefit if your fellows are devoured by proto-lions. Electricity and steam will come eventually, of course. You'll be amazed at how quickly your sub-global culture can change once you have energy. Electricity heralds the arrival of instantaneous worldwide communication systems, lightning-fast transportation networks, international marketplaces, interplanetary trade operations, and the impending emergence of a global culture. At this point, you start to have a true understanding of the mechanisms forming the universe and the planet. Now, we move on to Type 1 civilization. The fact that human development is somewhat random means that we are unable to estimate how long it would take us to get there. Perhaps a new Cold War could accelerate it a thousandfold. No joke. Let's go back to Type 1 now, the time when we develop into a global society. Nuclear fuel is now our primary fuel source, but you might say, isn't that trendy right now? Yes, it is. Nevertheless, we rely on nuclear fission to power our energy needs, and it is both risky to operate and used in large quantities. Fusion power will underpin the first-class civilization. Fusion, in contrast to fission, which requires rare metals like uranium or plutonium, releases far more energy and may be carried out using common materials like hydrogen. We would have propulsor technology, which would make interplanetary travel straightforward and reduce the ludicrous amount of fuel needed to propel rockets into orbit. After that, we evolve into a star civilization of Type II. We have advanced to the point where nuclear fusion energy is insufficient to meet our needs. The following logical step is to harness energy from nearby stars. Yes, this does not imply that we should install solar panels on the ocean floor, but rather on the star. The idea of a Dyson sphere was first proposed by theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson. We would erect a ring system around a nearby star and harness all of its energy for our own needs. As per the original scale, Type 3 introduced the galactic civilization and was the last level. Dyson spheres will still be our energy source, but this time we'll construct them throughout the galaxy to finance our research. Wormholes would be within our reach, allowing us to swiftly traverse space. If you're unaware of its nature, it is an abstract concept. Treat the cosmos like a blank sheet of paper. You wish to move on to a different spot on the document. 
To avoid physically moving from one place to another, you can just fold the paper in such a way that your current location and the destination are touching. Next, punch a hole in your current position and input the destination you wish to visit. This is about how one could imagine wormholes to work. A Type 3 can zap through existing wormholes, but is not able to create new ones. By Type 4, we would have evolved into a global society. Supernovas would be our primary source of energy. At that point, a star bursts into an enormous ball of energy. We would be mining supernovas for energy while traversing several galaxies. Humans would become immortal at this point, really. Living in the metaverse or downloading our consciousness to another body, like Ultrons, and switching avatars and all would be possible if we could upload our consciousness. The feeling of existence along with our memories and experiences to a computer. New possibilities would present themselves to this culture if we were no longer bound to our physical bodies. We would also be able to establish civilizations of type zero. They're not quite godlike, but they are close. As type five beings, humans would discover the astounding fact that multiverses exist. This might sound like science fiction, but keep in mind that in the early 1900s, traveling to space, and in the late 1900s, having self-driving automobiles were also works of fiction. We are a multiverse society now at this fifth stage. To go would demand an unfathomable quantity of energy. It's likely that a type five civilization would search for white holes periodically. Even if they are merely hypothetical, Einstein's field equations can be used to demonstrate their existence. A white hole is thought to be capable of emitting energy equal to 14 million times that of a typical galaxy. Although you may believe that should be the pinnacle of civilization right there, well, you'll soon discover the bigger picture. Consider a situation in which you are not even human. Time can be controlled and universes can easily be created. What if our civilization develops into a type six or seven? Then how would life be? There would be major improvements from type five civilization to a type six civilization. We can now control everything as opposed to just some areas of several universes. Any universe of our choosing can be instantly created or destroyed. On top of that, time would be a whole new ball game for us. Now we have complete control over it. You're welcome to make more than one timeline. Perhaps you should make one in which you run for president. Maybe your hair is blonde. Furthermore, there wouldn't be just one civilization in all of these multiverses. It's likely that by now we have found or perhaps started several new species civilizations in various worlds. The ones that fall between type zero and five. Naturally, humans would be in charge of these civilizations as we are the top predators. Alternatively, we may consider their civilizations to be inferior to our own. Perhaps all we do is watch them like we would ant colonies or zoo animals. Furthermore, how would you appear in a type six civilization? You may choose to seem exactly how you do right now because you would have the ability to manipulate matter and reality. You could always try and imitate the rock. Additionally, it's possible that humans might cease to exist as biological beings. Artificial intelligence and technology have only become more sophisticated as we've gone through these civilizations. It's possible that we combine with AI to become robo-human hybrids. Plus, the possibilities are endless if you have a more imaginative mind. Maybe you're extraterrestrial, a behemoth fit for a deity. Alternatively, you might simplify your life by turning it into a ball of energy, one that could effortlessly navigate between universes. A type six society might sound insane, but just wait until you see what comes next in the type seven society. The further we've advanced through these civilizations, the more absurd, strange, and perplexing things have become. We've officially reached the stage where it's nearly impossible for humans to comprehend this civilization. More universes could be created, changed, and destroyed by us. Controlling the omniverse is one of the main distinctions between a type six and seven civilization. This is totally conjectural, yet the omniverse dwarfs the multiverse by a significant margin. A limitless number of real and imagined universes are included there. It depicts every imaginable time frame and includes realities that we still don't fully comprehend. It would be possible for humans, or whatever we're called at this time, to transcend both physical and metaphysical reality. At least given what we currently know, our new forms are unfathomable. By then, we wouldn't have to worry about passing away or going through any kind of pain. Alternatively, people could live in a perpetual state of happiness, enlightenment, and euphoria. It's possible that we could live at the same time in other timelines and universes, able to see into the future and the past at the same time. It raises the question of whether mankind would even want to reach this degree, given its immense capability. 
Would anyone even think of us as humans? Because of how far society has come, we no longer even get to experience the things that define us. Our existing weak human wants and concepts have been superseded by our newfound invincibility, so we no longer have time to spend with our loved ones or pursue our passions. Now we're creating whole new worlds and acting like gods. There will be a lot of existential difficulties for us throughout this time. Given humanity's immense power and ability to control everything, what hope is there for us? Earth, the universe, and now the omniverse have all been subjugated by us. What remains for humanity to achieve and where does progress stop? Problems and difficulties, two parts of being human, wouldn't exist. Thus, even though some of these sound exciting, would the effort be worthwhile? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and put on notifications for more videos. See you soon.